So when you want to solve an integral of a rational function where you have a quadratic function in the denominator, one method that can be useful is to complete the square for that quadratic function. And doing so will allow us to use the integration rule for the inverse tangent function, or as I have it written right here, the arctangent function. And so what do I mean by completing the square? Well, note that if a quadratic function is a perfect square, it can be written in the following two ways. You can have the quantity a plus b squared, or you can have the quantity of a minus b and then the quantity squared. And so if we were to expand these two expressions by squaring the first term, multiplying the two terms together, and then multiplying them by two, and then squaring the last term, we will find that they are equal to a squared plus two times a times b plus b squared. And then for our second expression, we'd have a squared minus two times a times b plus b squared. Right, so these two forms of a quadratic function are perfect squares because they can be factored into these forms where we have a quantity squared. And so what we wanna do is get this quadratic function in the denominator of the function in our integral to be in one of these two forms. Because as it currently stands, it is not in that form. This is not a quadratic function that is a perfect square. In fact, it cannot even be factored in its current form. Right, there are no factors of positive two that when you add them together, equal the coefficient of the middle term. And so what we can do to fix that and get this function into a form that we know how to integrate for our integration rule here is to complete the square for this quadratic function. And so how are we going to do that? Well, there's actually a pretty simple process that we can follow. If we compare this quadratic function to this quadratic function right here, notice that our middle term is positive, so that's why I chose this expression over this one. So let's erase this one so we don't get confused. What we can do is compare the middle term of our quadratic function to the middle term of this general form, right? Because notice that in that middle term, we have two times a times b. And so what we wanna do is solve for b in that middle term and then square it and that will tell us what our last term needs to be for our quadratic function so that it is a perfect square and can be factored in this manner. And so if we take that middle term of 2x, what can we do to solve for b? Well, if we divide out the two and then divide out what a is, what we should be left with is b. So we'll take 2x, so we have 2x, and note that this x is our value of a, right? We have a squared, and for this expression, we have x squared. And so, I'll write this x in red, so we'll have two times x, but we actually wanna divide that out and divide out that two to be left with b. And so if we divide that term by two x, what we're left with is one, right? Two x divided by itself is just equal to one. And so, that is our value of b, and if we square it, one squared is just itself, that is our value of b squared. And so now that we know what b squared needs to be for our quadratic function to be a perfect square, all we have to do is add and subtract that value to that expression. And so here's what it looks like. We'll have that this is equal to the integral of one divided by x squared plus two x, and then let's write in what we know our value of b squared needs to be right, we determined that the value of b squared needs to be one, or one squared. Either way, it's still one. And so we'll add in one, but then you need to remember to also subtract one, right? We need to write minus one so that we're really not changing anything within our function, okay? But then we still need to remember to add in that two that was there before. So we'll have plus two, and then we'll write dx. So what we did here is we didn't really change the function in any way. We just added and subtracted one in the denominator. Notice that that one and that negative one would cancel each other out, and so you'd just be left with this expression right here. So this is really no different. We're just adding and subtracting the same value, and so this function is still the same function, but it just looks a little bit different. But now look at what we have here in the denominator. We have x squared plus two x plus one, which is a quadratic function 
that is a perfect square, right? That is what the goal is of the process of completing the square. So now what we have is that this is equal to the integral of one divided by the quadratic function x squared plus two x plus one. And then let's just combine these other two constants, negative one and two. And so negative one plus two is positive one. So I have plus one and then dx. And now we can factor this quadratic function to be in this form where we have a plus b squared. And so in this case, a is equal to x and b is equal to one. And so what we'll have is that this is equal to the integral of one divided by x plus one squared plus one times dx, right? We just factored this quadratic function and now we have x plus one quantity squared and then plus that other constant that is left over. All right, and so now we're done completing the square, but now the question is, why did we do that? How does this help us in any way? Well, if you compare the structure of this integral to this integration rule right here for the inverse tangent function, notice that it is very similar, right? We have one divided by some function squared plus a constant squared, and then in the integral rule, we have one divided by a constant squared plus some function u defined with x squared. Now the order in which those terms are being added is the opposite of what is down here, but that doesn't matter because the order of addition doesn't matter, right? One plus two is three and two plus one is three. And so it doesn't matter what order we add terms in, which is why this integral right here can be integrated using this integration rule. And so that's our next step. And so let's clean up our work here. And what we need to do is identify each part of this integral as it pertains to this integration rule. So our constant a is going to be equal to one, right? You could view that one as being one squared, right? One squared is still one. And so one squared is a squared. And so we can say that a is equal to one. And then u is going to be equal to x plus one because that is our function of x that is being squared in the denominator. And so we'll have u is equal to x plus one. And so now that we have identified both a and u, we can work on rewriting this integral in terms of u so that we can see how to integrate it using this integration rule, right? So let's continue with the u substitution process by taking the derivative of u. And so if we do that, we'll have du dx is equal to the derivative of x, which is just one, right? The derivative of x to the power of one is just equal to its coefficient, which in this case is one. So we have one plus the derivative of one, which is zero because the derivative of all constants is zero. And so we have that the derivative of u is equal to one. And then if we multiply both sides by dx, we can solve for du. And so we'll have that du is equal to one times dx, and so du is just equal to dx. So now what we can do is rewrite this integral in terms of u. So what we'll have is that this is equal to the integral of one divided by u squared plus one squared times du, right? We replaced x plus one with u because that's what we set it equal to, and we replaced dx with du because that's what we found that that was equal to. Okay, and so by doing that, we have completely rewritten our integral in terms of u instead of in terms of x, and now we can see how this matches up with our integration rule, right? We have one divided by u squared plus one squared, where one is a constant, and we have one divided by a constant squared plus u squared. And so we can say that this integral is equal to one divided by a, so we'll have one divided by one, right? a is equal to one, times the arctangent function, or the inverse tangent function, so we'll have times arctangent, of u divided by a. So we'll write u divided by a, which is one, and then we will add c. And then if we clean up our work here, we can simplify this and replace u with what we set it equal to, and then we'll have our final answer. And so one divided by one is just one, so we don't really need to write that. So we'll have that this is equal to arc tangent of u divided by one. And so anything divided by one is just itself. So we just need to write down u or what it is equal to, which is x plus one. So we'll have x plus one and then plus c. All right, and then with that, that is the final solution to this integral. The solution is arc tangent of x plus one plus c. 
All right, and so that is how you can take the integral of a rational function where the denominator is a quadratic function and complete the square so that you can use the integration rule for the inverse tangent function. All right, and so if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions and you found this video to be helpful or you enjoyed it, feel free to check out some of my other calculus videos that you can find on my channel. But this is all I had for now, so I will see you next time.